dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good evening, I'm Keaton Hall. Pipelines running across the region busted in the flood, leaving people without water and gas for an extended period of time. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox talked to a community in Bulin that's still trying to get the lines connected again, but are facing an uphill battle. Over a month since the flood, some Eastern Kentuckians are still without gas to heat their homes. So we've got an issue. We've been there with no cooking resources, hot water, drying. Sharon and her neighbors have spent time living in what they consider primitive ages. It's been, it's getting close to the two months range and we need gas. The flood tore apart their gas pipeline, which was operated by Clean Gas and Knott County and disconnected completely. What happened was the all the service lines from their meter to our gathering lines were destroyed. Sharon blames clean gas for their long wait. I think 13 in total that they're not uh, trying to fix back. Uh, Weinberg says there's a liability for them to reconnect there and the corporation statutes prevent them from building back. If we were to go in there and replace these service lines, then we would have the obligation to keep them up forever through any other floods. Plus, we would be legally liable for any kind of injuries that occurred as a result of the service line. Weinberg says they are still concerned about gas issues, not just in Bulin, but across the county, as cleanup procedures have also led to pipeline breaks. In Bulin, Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Stidham says they've contacted Hazard City Hall in hopes of connecting with the city. A University of Kentucky professor is facing sexual abuse charges. Kevin Reel, the chair of the UK Department of Communication, is accused of sexually abusing a child under the age of 12. According to the Kentucky Colonel, police arrested him on Thursday. UK spokesperson Jay Blanton said the school is taking the issue very seriously. Reel is on administrative leave and is not on campus. He's charged with incest, sexual abuse and sodomy. A preliminary hearing is set for October 7th. Well, we are tracking some soggy weather across the mountains this weekend. Let's go out to UVA Wise. You can see that this is really the story of the day across the mountains. It is gloomy. We are looking at cloud cover, also looking at some showers. Current temperature is sitting at 63 degrees, so temperature is not too bad thanks to those clouds and those showers. 72 in Somerset, 70 for Hazard, 69 at this hour for Jackson, 66 in Prestonsburg, and 65 over in Pikeville. Now we did have those off and on showers throughout the day. Now those are moving off towards the north and we are getting a little bit of a break off towards the south, but do not let your guard down because more showers are possible into this evening and also into tonight. If you have any plans outdoors, I would pack the rain gear just to be safe. A few showers are possible and then higher rain chances return by Sunday and then we track some drier air by next week. So a lot going on in the weather office today. I have that full forecast and what you can expect coming up in just a little bit. Keaton. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Cameron. Hundreds of millions of dollars is now available for rural areas throughout the country lacking high speed Internet access. Round four of the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Reconnect program is open for eligible applicants, including states, local governments and Indian tribes. The Agriculture Department says the funding is being provided by the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law. It's for up to $150 million in loans and up to $300 million in loan grant combinations. And then lastly, up to $700 million in straight grants in round four of the Reconnect program. Applications are open until November 2nd of this year. As the program has rolled out, the White House has noted that high-speed Internet is not a luxury. It's required for many jobs, education, and communication. The Pikeville Farmers Market is nearing the end of its season, but many local farmers were impacted by severe weather in late July. WYMT's Jordan Mullins has more from some local farmers on how they've pushed on despite losing some of their crops. The Pikeville Farmers Market is full of crafters, baked goods, vendors, and of course, plenty of produce. But some farmers have been hit hard by the recent floods and lost crops. Some were not flooded, like the Walker family farm, 
but large amounts of rain still hurt the farm's harvest. We didn't get flooded, but we did lose cucumbers and other plants that just could not. Too much water, too long, they drowned. And makes it harder to properly take care of a large farm. If it's raining, you can't run the tiller, you can't, uh, you can't take care of it. Then the weeds take over, the weeds get higher than the plants, the plants don't do any good. Because of the unpredictable Eastern Kentucky weather, farmers plant several crops to ensure a good harvest for their customers. Unfortunately in our area, you never know what the weather's gonna be, so you plant very, a variety of crops, and uh, some hit, some don't. Some do great, some don't. And some customers have needed it now more than ever. We've had some of our customers that have small victory gardens, they've, they've lost all their garden and they come here and they talk to us and again we're able to help them some. Making do with what they have been given and taking care of folks as best they can. In Pikeville, Jordan Mullins, WIMT Mountain News. The Pikeville Farmers Market is open every Tuesday from 4.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. and Saturday from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. The final Moonbow Egg Fest in Corbin kicked off this morning. Chefs from across the southeast participated, making all kinds of food. Each dish had its own special twist, adding buzz to a rising culinary culture in the town. Corbin Tourism and Convention Commission Executive Director Maggie Monholan says the food opens people's eyes to new tastes. We have roots in food, but being a public event, this is something that has really opened people's eyes to the culinary scene in Corbin. Although this is the last egg fest, Monholan says three chefs from the town will participate in the World Food Championships starting next year. BCTC offers a range of courses and today the Georgetown campus wanted to inspire the younger generation of women to explore the idea of working in manufacturing. They invited middle and high school girls in Kentucky to visit their campus and get some hands-on experience in the field. From manufacturing to electrical technology to robotics and, and more, BCTC even has female faculty members that instruct these courses. Sarah Palmer is a faculty instructor at BCTC. She once was like the girls, learning about manufacturing jobs, and after taking classes and after gaining real-world experience, she now wants to give back. There is a huge need for this, um, this job field right now. So we really want to open up that opportunity to females too because traditionally this is a male dominated field but there's no reason that females can't participate too. With the hands-on experience today the girls can learn that doing these activities is a skill for everyone to achieve and even women can take part in this field. You can find more information about these programs on the BCTC website. A Saturday for survivors in Louisville. People came together for the Kentucky More Than Pink Walk, raising money for Susan G. Komen and breast cancer research. Stacy Scovanner volunteered for Susan G. Komen years ago in memory of her friend. Then she was on the other side of things, fighting her own battle with breast cancer. I'm very big about helping other people who are affected by this. I know exactly what they feel now. I know when someone's saying you're having a bad day, now I totally understand because it's very hard to overcome this and say who you are as a person now, not just a breast cancer survivor, but I still want to be Stacy. Sco Banner said there's still a lot of misconceptions out there about breast cancer, so she's happy for events like this to help raise awareness. Dog owners brought their furry friends to Woodland Park today in Lexington for the Humane Society's annual dog paddle. Over 300 dogs took a swim to help raise money for the Humane Society. Owners also had a chance to shop from local vendors to grab some treats and toys for their pets. Organizers say they've been excited all year to see the pups take the plunge. It is my favorite event. It's so much fun. Somehow, luckily, the dogs usually are on their best behavior. Um, and like I said, we're a nonprofit, the Lexington Humane Society, so we have thousands of animals that we care for every single year. And it seems like we've had a very busy summer. Beagles helping out with flood victims, different areas. So this money will be used to help out those animals that were displaced and that we are now taking care of. The Humane Society's next event is the Beastie Ball in Gala. Coming up at 6, as Suicide Prevent Week comes to an end, we hear the story of a Pulaski County woman making a difference. 
and rain chances continue into your Sunday, but we are tracking some cooler air by next week. I have that full forecast coming up.